Hello there and welcome to my ammo guide for Jack to Lines 3. In this video I'm going to talk about all things bullets. We're going to cover different calibers, what they're good for, where they go and what to know about them. I'm going to cover the process of ammo crafting and all those little things worth knowing about it. And I'm going to talk about the different types of ammo that you can use. So that's that. The timestamps are down below and I want to get started with the calibers. Jack Lines 3 has a simplified caliber system. The real world of bullets is even more messy and convoluted. So I found it already complicated enough as it is, but actually it's quite easy once you got the hang of it. So the first bullet to introduce is the 12 gauge buckshot. It's a typical shotgun bullet and there's not much more to say about it. All shotguns use here the same bullet, so you don't need to worry about different calibers on shotguns. It's all 12 gauge. Now, the .44 bullet is your typical revolver bullet and you'll see this on the Peacemaker, the Anaconda, the Desert Eagle. These weapons like to use that bullet. It has a nice punch, it is quite commonly available, but well, there's nothing much more to say about it. It has no built-in armor penetration, which is also a tad bit sad, but being so common, that is no real big surprise. Luckily, some guns that you can put it into, like the Anaconda or the Desert Eagle, do that armor penetration thing for you. The next bullet to introduce is the .50. This is maybe the heaviest bullet in the game. It fits into machine guns, sniper rifles, and or handguns. It has a lot of bang, a lot of damage, built-in armor penetration. The downside of it is its rarity. It's rare to find, hard to craft, and you always want more of these once you start using them. So use them wisely for boss fights or whatever you find hard to kill. The next bullet is the 5.56mm. This is a standard bullet for assault rifles. Some SMGs use it and it's the first bullet that is commonly available that has built-in armor penetration and well I would I would say it's an uncommon bullet. It's not as commonly available like uh, the 9mm but it's also not a scarcity. With these bullets, just like the uh, upcoming 7.62mm, uh, it's like that. As long as not everybody on your team uses the same bullet, you'll have plenty of these. Just take into account that not everybody on your squad is using these, and rarity well, shouldn't be too much of a problem. The next bullet is the 762 and this comes in two distinct flavors. There's the NATO version, and there's the Warsaw Pact version, which is... Uh, basically the Russian one. I'll call it the Russian one for simplicity here. So these bullets are technically the same, but Russian rifles take this version and NATO rifles take this version. So at the end of the day, you should always balance out Western and uh, Russian versions of guns in your team to avoid ammo, uh, any ammo bottlenecks and whatever sort. Gameplay-wise, these have built-in armor penetration. They're as roughly as rare as the 5.56, and they are among the most powerful bullets in the mid-game. You'll use them a lot, and they are very versatile, go into many guns, and have lots of uses. Use them wisely. The last bullet to introduce is the 9mm standard. This is a typical handgun bullet. You find it in the Beretta and uh, common bullet, uh, guns like these, and SMGs like the MP5 love to shoot this bullet as well. It is available, it has a mediocre damage, no uh, built-in armor penetration, but it is very versatile. As you can see here, it comes in various flavors and is therefore a really nice thing to work with. So there is also Bullets for grenade launchers and heavy weapons, these are found in the explosives crafting section, but they don't require any bigger explanation, it's just like with a shotgun ammo, mortar bullets go into the mortar, you know, grenade launcher bullets go into the grenade launcher, there's no big thing here, and we're going to cover them in the crafting section, which begins now. So, ammo crafting. First thing you'll need to craft ammo is a repair shop. You'll find one in Ernie Village, that's the first one you'll uh, have access to, but you can also find one down here at L9 at Port Cacao or various other places on the map that I don't want to spoil here. So that's the first thing. 
The second thing you require is somebody who's good at explosives, and you'll need ingredients, namely, or mostly, gunpowder and parts. So, to craft ammo, you go on to operations on a sector that has a repair shop, and there you'll have the options to craft ammo or craft explosives. You select that, you select your crafter, and then you enter this wonderful screen that you've already seen in the first part of the video. So, to craft ammo, you transform parts and gunpowder into ammo. It's just simple like that. You put it into the list, and then the game tells you how long your crafter will take. That's that. Worth mentioning here is that most types of ammo do require some addition of gunpowder. Gunpowder can be found during your adventures, but there's also a nice little nifty trick that I want to introduce to you, and that's pipe bombs. So pipe bombs, if you press right click on them here and then combine, if you happen to have a wire cutter, you can extract gunpowder of these. And that's wonderful, isn't it? So that's a way to make good use of these little th uh, thingies here. And ever since I know about it, I consider them only as a different form as gunpowder because I really don't like to play with them. So when you want to craft these things, there's a couple of things that I want to mention here. First of all, bullets, the standard bullets are made out of parts and gunpowder. The modified bullets though, they behave a little bit oddly. So for example, to make hollow point ammo of either type, you will require the standard bullet and add into some gunpowder. This is typically the case for all of those really powerful recipes. The, the mighty smacking ones, they have this uh, standard bullet plus gunpowder. The lower quality, so to say, of ammo types that you can craft behave a little bit differently. So for example, here for an armor piercing bullet, we only require parts and the standard bullets. These are much easier to acquire. And you should really keep an eye out on these recipes because for example, you can upgrade your nine millimeter bullets really, really cheaply into something damn useful without spending any gunpowder. And this applies also to the found bullets that you got. So sometimes it is really worth considering, especially with the nine millimeter bullets, not to use them raw, but to upgrade them into something more useful because, you know, adding just five parts into it and making it armor piercing does add so much bang into your book. And there's also other types like the match ammo, which increases aiming, but I want to introduce all these things later down the road. But my most favorite example is the shock ammo, which just picks up standard ammo of the 9mm type and does something crazy to it. What I'm trying to get into here is pay close attention to the details of the recipes. And I want to summarize here now at the end. Standardly, your gunpowder will be used to create ammo or modify ammo into something really powerful. Ammo is different in its costs. Shotgun ammo is dirty cheap, like really dirty cheap to craft. You get a lot of ammo for almost no parts at all, while other ammos are different in its costs. So most prominent example here, the point 50, 20 parts and two gunpowder for just 10 bullets. They might be powerful, but your machine gun can sneeze these out in such a fast time that this is a really, really costly bullet. In the middle field are the assault rifle bullets with 10 parts and one gunpowder, and among the cheapest ones are the 9mm ones. The crafting of these is in so far very interesting, as you can upgrade existing bullets or close bottlenecks with that system. I also want to give a quick glance on the explosives crafting because, you know, we're already in that department. So in that screen, you get to craft, like I said, the cartridges for mortars or the grenades for your grenade launches, but you can also craft all manner of different explosives, which will use also gunpowder, but sometimes also the C4 that you find, or TNT. So if you don't know what to use these things for, now you do. So that's pretty much how ammo crafting works. There's not much more to add into, and I want to get now into the ammo type section. We already glanced over it a little bit when we were talking about ammo crafting, but I want to go full on into detail now. So every type of bullet has a certain amount of upgrades that you can do with it. Some are more versatile than others, 
And like I already shown here, the 9mm is pretty versatile, whereas the .50 is not too versatile. So let's get started with shotgun bullets. You can modify your standard buckshot into breacher bullets, which are armor penetrating, suppressing, and increasing the attack cone while shortening the range. This though is for me not really a downgrade because with shotguns I like to get into the face of enemies anyways. The only downside of these, they are costy. They involve extra gunpowder, you only get 10 bullets out of it, but they got a lot of bang here in it. The sabot armor, uh, the sabot bullets, they are a lot of, uh, they are a lot less cheap and uh, costy, but they are, well, also way less impressive. It's a range upgrade, and I don't know, I'm not the biggest fan of high range shotgun action, but if you are, this is the bullet for you. The salt shot bullet is the debuff bullet, so to say. It inflicts an accuracy, it lowers the damage, shortens the range, widens the attack cone, so you can use that either to debuff AOE-wise an entire squad and run away, or debuff singular, singular enemies. It's a specialized bullet, but it has its uses. There's also the flare cartridge, which is only for the flare gun, so no usage there for the shotgun, but I wanted to give it an honorable mention because it somehow fits into the same topic. Now then, moving to the .50 bullets. .50 can be modified into explosive bullets, which eats stick grenades, so if you happen to have too many stick grenades, you can make explosive bullets out of it. It's a pretty nasty usage. Given the fact that you don't need to add in extra gunpowder, I really like this recipe. You know, these bullets are already rare, but heck, you can put that into your sniper rifle. Sick idea, no? The slap is basically the armor piercing bullet of the .44, uh, of the uh, .50, and, well, it has a higher armor pen, it has a crit chance, it comes at, a, at extra part cost, so if you do that, you have... 40 parts for 10 bullets, that makes 4 parts per bullet, yeah, but it surely kills something. We have also the frack um, version here, crafted out of Molotov cocktails, which inflicts burning and exposes the enemy. Also sick option, also no gunpowder involved, and I really like the recipes for the .50s in terms of usage for explosives that I don't uh, like to use or I have too many of. So, just as an idea. Now, the point four four now. I enter now the field of common upgrades. So, these are applicable, many of these are applicable to all the other bullets as well. So, I'm going to glance over these upgrades in future only quickly. So, armor piercing, we already saw that on the slap ammo here for the .50, but this is a very common sight on all the bullets. It improves armor pen, it only costs a couple of pots, and it is really a powerful upgrade given the fact that you can hurt enemies that you typically cannot hurt with a .44 caliber that well. I really like that one. The hollow point one is a crit enhancer and a bleed in and, and adds a bleed component. I really like these bullets to hunt big animals or stuff that has a lot of HP where you don't expect them to, to keel over in one turn generally, or just guns with a high crit chance that want to have more of it. That's why I love hollow point as well. But given the fact that it costs extra gunpowder, it's a bit costly, I'd say. The match bullets, they increase aiming bonus. I love these. If you happen to have the, the extra parts, it just makes your bullets more precise and it's pretty good ammo for foggy environments or wherever your aiming is being impaired by the environment. That's where I like these most. And the shock bullets. So, shock bullets are, all, uh, are really awesome. Crit, expose and bleed. Lowering the range on handgun bullets isn't that much of a big deal, so it's basically a wonderful thing to prep up combos with. You get your uh, close quarters fighter close in, fire one bullet, and the team can take care of the rest because the enemy is now exposed. Really like that concept. So, the other calibers here now have very, very similar types. So, the assault rifle bullets have armor piercing, we already know about these hollow point, but it's worth mentioning that here the hollow point of the .44 does not have um, a 
no armor penetration flag. That's because the 0.44 doesn't uh, armor penetrate defaultly. So that means on assault rifle bullets, you actually downgrade the armor pen, but you get the crit chance and the bleed nevertheless. So apart from that, the only thing that's new for the assault rifle bullets is the tracer bullet. The tracer bullet exposes the enemy and it's really a cool combo bullet. The only downside is it is a little bit costly and well you need to set up the situation well for it and it can easily happen that you waste these by being absent-minded but they are actually really cool. The 7.6mm has the same upgrades as the 5.56 and I could even do the same comments on each and every one of these bullets so we can't just skip on over these because there's really not more to add to these. Instead I want to talk about the 9mm bullets a little bit. So 9mm bullets are on their own pretty unimpressive but their modification potential is really what makes them shine. Put a couple of parts on it, bam, armor pan. And it's really cheap. It only costs you time, which is a bit of a tragedy. Five hours aren't not too much. Are not too much, but, but just to say. So the other upgrades are similar. Hollow point costs gunpowder, therefore a little bit more costly. Match here is with all the bullets a cheap upgrade, and shock. This is really interesting for the 9mm, because shock here is featuring the exposure effect, bleeding, high crit, low range, but heck, you can do this for free, basically. It just costs you time, nothing more. And this is really amazing, therefore, really cool stuff. The subsonic flavor is unique for the 9mm, but I personally am not a big fan. I don't know if it adds any extra silencing on a already suppressed gun. Let me know if you know, but for me, I really don't know what this bullet is good for, but maybe I'm just, maybe I'm just unknowing. And tracer bullets, we already covered these. Gunpowder intense, not really that interesting because you know, you can get, the only difference between a tracer and a shock bullet is that the tracer has a higher range, but uh, I would take the shock bullet any time of the day and try to get my dude closer into the face of the enemy. So that's one side. I really want to cover the explosive sector real quick because, you know, while we're at ammo types, might as well cover this real quick. With the mortars, we got gas cartridges, which uh, choke the enemy, or smoke cartridges, which give us the ability to cover the enemy's sight. And we have on the grenade launches standard frag or flashbangs, which inflict suppression, which is really cool. But apart from that, there's not too much flavor here. Grenades come in different flavors as well. Tear gas, smoke grenades, flashbangs, you name it. But I don't think that any of these require too much of an introduction. All right, I hope you found that helpful. Let me know if I missed a spot in the comment section or if you want to add in something. I'm all ears because, you know, I love to learn from you folks as usual. Leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed and consider subscribing. I'd be delighted if you did. Have a wonderful day. Thanks for your time. See you soon.